getting to explore this material with Barry was a thrill. It's not something we often explore, particularly in traditional American cinema. I know that Barry certainly is always after those questions, the complications of just being a person. There's all these elements between the acting, between the writing, between the cinematography, that somehow have to come together in a way to support the overall piece. Tell me your story, how you survived the camps. Nobody wants to hear the truth about the camps. We shoot the past in the camps in black and white, which was a decision made early so that we can set it off from the rest of his life. So that's the nightmares of his past. You want to be as credible as you can in terms of the camps. So there's a huge amount of research looking over, you know, photos and conversations with people. We actually went to Auschwitz. It was an altering experience to touch the rails in which people were brought in to see the pile of baby shoes to see the piles of toothbrushes, to see the objects, the personal belongings thrown into a pile and left. It's altering. These are the choices we made every day. Choices made when you remember that you once had a family. Ben is an incredibly dedicated actor with enormous talent. And he loses himself in a character. It's not that, here I am, I'm Ben Foster, and I'll do this. He literally becomes another human being. I needed to go as far as I physically could, and that preparation resulted in losing 62 pounds for the camps, which was Harry's recorded weight. And then we took five weeks off, and I put on 50 for the ring. He's great to work with, talk about things. What about if we did this? What happens if we tried that, et cetera? Always open, finding an extra moment. And Barry, as a director, he's kind of like a jazz conductor. He's interested in improv. There's a scene where Harry is speaking with Miriam in the kitchen, and he's supposed to say, oh, you don't know the worst part of me. It keeps going on in my head. What haven't you told me? Miriam is to come to embrace him and make him feel that he's still loved. I don't know what he said to Vicky, but we started doing the scene and she didn't get up to hug me. I said to her, Vicky, when he finishes telling this story, don't get up and walk over to him, to hug him, to comfort him. And she said, so what should I do? I said, you just, you don't do that. You have to tell him. Tell who? Your son. <laughs> <laughs> I think it turns out to be one of the really effective scenes in the movie. It made him angry that he wasn't comforted having, to, having explained something, and then it accelerated into this argument. I knocked over a pitcher of orange juice, which ended up all over the set. It hadn't been planned, it hadn't been rehearsed, but uh, it happened in that moment, and uh, now it's in the movie. Who deserves to have that kind of darkness pushed inside of them, inside of their children? You already are! As we have read about and spoke to people whose parents may have been in the camps, there's much that they don't want to discuss and don't want to share. And in some ways, it has causes a, a friction within a family because to a younger kid who doesn't understand it all, you say, I don't know if he likes me, or I don't know if, the, you know what I mean? All of the things that a child would have because you don't know the past, you don't know past history, you don't know what went on, so you're only applying it to you. What does he like this, Mom? Your father loves you very much. But he doesn't like me, does he? The past doesn't just go away. The past can keep coming back and we need to understand it as best we can, because I think that's the only way you can Im improve and move forward. When you were born, all I wanted was for you not to have to make the choices I had to make.